Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the pastrami Reuben with homemade sauerkraut. The pastrami Reuben is one of my all-time favorite sandwiches and probably in part because of the time and dedication it takes to get to the end product. Now obviously you can't have a pastrami Reuben without pastrami, but that's not the focus of today's video. We've already done a pastrami video and if you haven't already, you should go check it out. We'll put the link in the description. Today we're gonna to focus on the sandwich as a whole. So everything else, the rye bread that's toasted, the Swiss cheese, the dressing, and most importantly, the homemade sauerkraut. Now much like the pastrami, the sauerkraut itself takes a commitment of time. So we started our sauerkraut five weeks ago, and I can show you the finished product today, and then we're gonna start back at the beginning. How do you get started on your sauerkraut? How does the process go? And we'll wrap this video up with the finished product, the whole sandwich, we're gonna cook it on the grill, but first, let's dive into that sauerkraut. So five weeks ago, this was just fresh cabbage and salt and juniper berries, that's it. The juniper berries are an optional seasoning, but now where we're at is a finished sauerkraut product. These leaves on top, these are just keeping the sauerkraut submerged to keep any bad stuff away from the kraut itself. But if you could smell this, it smells incredible. Just the fermentation that's taken place over the last month plus is what really makes sauerkraut what it is. So let's rewind five weeks and I'll show you where we started. I'm gonna start off with a three pound head of cabbage and I'm just gonna take off some of these outer leaves. As I just showed you, we can use these to keep that kraut submerged while it's fermenting. And also these outer leaves tend to be a little bit softer and don't have the same texture as the inner leaves. Now once you get the outer leaves removed, you just want to quarter it right through the core right there. And then we're going to core this thing out by running our knife diagonal right here. Just get rid of that core. And then for the leaves themselves, we're going to go with a nice fine shred. And then you want to transfer the shredded cabbage to a large bowl. I'm just going to break this up now because the next thing we're going to do is add our salt. And we want to be able to salt all of the surfaces of the cabbage. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but for these three pounds of cabbage, all you're going to need is one ounce of kosher salt. And we're actually going to build the brine here in the cabbage. So I'm going to start by crushing this cabbage down. We want to break down the cell walls. Make sure you're tossing it around to get that salt distributed evenly and continue to just crush it with your hands. And I'll give this just a couple of minutes of kneading and what you'll start to notice is that here on the surface you're seeing some moisture come out. That's the water being released from the cabbage. I'm also gonna sprinkle in a couple teaspoons of juniper berries just for a little extra seasoning. Now I'm just gonna cover this with plastic wrap and I'll come back to it every 20 to 30 minutes and do the same thing again. We're gonna crush it up, try and get some more of that water out and then let it sit. We're gonna repeat this process until we have some standing water in the bowl. So we'll be back later to show you the progress. It's been about an hour on the sauerkraut, so I want to show you guys the progress here. As you can see, it's, there's a lot more liquid that's come out. In fact, you can see a little bit of liquid in the bottom of the bowl. And again, every 20 to 30 minutes, just kind of working it, kneading the sauerkraut, breaking down those cell walls, and expelling the moisture. So that's our brine right there. All right, we'll cover it back up and let it rest just a little bit longer. We're back after about three hours. I think that this is ready to go into the mason jar at this point, so I want to show you guys what it looks like. 
So you can see how it's completely different visually. I mean, it all looks wet. It doesn't have that same bright green color. And if we squeeze it, tons of liquid coming out of there. You can see that there's now liquid standing in the bottom of the bowl. So at this point, we're gonna pack this into a half gallon sized mason jar and we're going to top it off with a little bit of salt water solution, a 2% salt water solution. Now to make your 2% salt solution, you just need about one cup of water to one teaspoon of kosher salt. We'll stir that to dissolve. And you wanna add enough of that 2% salt water solution to cover the cabbage. I'm just gonna do a touch more because I don't want the cabbage exposed to the air at all. All right, and now that that cabbage is submerged, I'm going to add some of those outer leaves that we took off of the head of cabbage at the beginning and just press those down. And this forms a little bit of a barrier in and of itself. If you want to, you could place another glass jar in here to help weigh this down, but you can see that we've got good coverage. That water is up above the cabbage all the way around, so we're going to leave it just like that. On with the lid. And you're going to want to store this at room temperature about 65 to 70 degrees, not in direct sunlight. You can cover it with a towel if you like. Uh, and after about three, two to three days, the fermentation process is really going to kick off. What you'll notice when it's sealed with a lid like this is it builds up pressure. So give it a few days, loosen the top of that lid and let that gas out. And you'll wanna do that every probably three to five days throughout this process. Now the fermentation process lasts as long as you think it needs to last. It's gonna need three weeks for sure, but this one's gone up to five weeks, up to six weeks would be great as well. It's all about flavor development at that point. As long as, as this is submerged and it's not growing any weird stuff, then you're fine. When it comes to the dressing on a Reuben, typically people go with Thousand Island or Russian, but both are very similar. They're mayonnaise and ketchup based. Uh, maybe Thousand Island's a little bit sweeter. Maybe Russian's a little bit spicier. We're gonna do something that's very similar to both today. It is a mayonnaise based dressing, but our little twist on it is that we've got some bread and butter pickled jalapenos that are gonna go in there instead of relish. So we're gonna take these bread and butter jalapenos. We wanna knock them down, get a fairly fine mince on them. These are gonna provide the dressing with a little bit of texture, but we don't want it to be too chunky. Shooting for about two tablespoons. All right, so here's our mayonnaise base. We're gonna start with half a cup. We'll add to that two tablespoons of the Big Rick's Chipotle ketchup. And that's where we're gonna get some of that sweetness. And I've got a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna brighten this up with a little bit of lemon juice. We'll shoot for about one tablespoon. I'm gonna mix this up to get everything incorporated. And then we're gonna need a little bit of salt. And I'm just using the uh, flaked finishing smoked salt. It'll be pretty subtle, that smokiness, but I really enjoy this salt. Give it a taste. Mm, it's really nice. It's sweet, it's tangy, just a little bit of back end heat. You can see the beautiful pink brine on our pastrami. And this is that exact brisket that we, uh, that we cured into pastrami from our video back in October of 2017. Now how you slice this is totally up to you. I like to go a little bit thinner than a pencil, but not super thin because I love the texture that a big thick slice of pastrami gives the sandwich. So this we just gently brought back up to temperature with the sous vide and you can see how tender that is. Hanging perfectly. Perfect little tug on it. Now all the elements are prepared so we're ready to build these sandwiches. 
We're starting with a slice of uh, seeded rye bread here. We're gonna put our Russian dressing down on top. Next, we're going with the sauerkraut. And we get our pastrami on there. And last, some Swiss cheese. Now let's head over to the grill. Today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Classic 2. It's set up for direct grilling with a cast iron half moon in place on the top level of the divide and conquer system. So we're running at about 450 degrees right now. First thing we need to do is get some fat down on the cooking surface. I'm gonna start out cheese side down. We get a nice toast on our soft rye bread and then flip these over. We already got some nice browning on here so we're gonna flip this over. And we'll close the lid to make sure that everything's plenty warm on the inside. All right, just a few minutes on the other side. And as you can see here, our cheese is melting. Everything's crispy. So these are ready to come off. All right, here's the finished product, ready to dig in. Look at that pastrami beauty. Mmm, never gets old. This will always be one of my favorite sandwiches. The texture of that cured meat, the crunchiness of the bread, the creaminess of the Russian dressing, and the tang from the sauerkraut. It's, it's a perfect sandwich. And don't skip out on making your own pastrami. You can do that from scratch. Go back and watch that video. It's gonna be immeasurably better than it will be if you get it from the deli counter. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. And let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.